Hey everybody, Ian here with Redline, and I wanted to do a quick classroom style video for you guys. Here at Redline, we sell a lot of replacement hydraulic cylinders and pumps, and it's very common that folks will come to us and they'll buy our pump to go on our competitor's piece of equipment. This is unfortunately happening a lot because a lot of our competitors don't actually support their products with parts after the sale, so customers come to us for cylinders, pumps, seal kits, all sorts of things. And in selling our customers, you know, pumps that go on a different, you know, competitor's piece of machinery to power a different hydraulic cylinder, we're kind of beginning to realize that a lot of folks don't necessarily understand the laws that govern the relationship between pump and cylinder. And so uh, I made a video a while back that, you know, kind of talked about some of this, and I wanted to do a follow-up video and dive a little bit deeper into some of this so that hopefully folks that are coming to us, you know, to buy a replacement part for a piece of machinery that is not a red line piece of machinery will better understand you know uh, the physics behind everything so that they can properly select the right part the right pump cylinder whatever for them in the end of this video, I'm going to put a link to this video, which is Hydraulics 101. Definitely give that a watch. A lot of great information in there. I'm also going to put a link to this video as well that just shows you how to rebuild a basic hydraulic cylinder. So let's suppose for a minute that our customer has got themselves a 30-ton piece of machinery. Maybe it's a 30-ton log splitter or a 30-ton shot press. Who knows, whatever, doesn't matter. And they're looking at our Redline 30-ton uh, hydraulic pump here. They're wondering whether or not they can install this pump on their piece of machinery, okay? But the kicker is they don't have our Redline 30-ton cylinder here. They're using a different cylinder. Maybe it's smaller, maybe it's wider, taller, longer, whatever, but they don't have our cylinder. Can they use that pump on their hydraulic cylinder? Maybe, maybe not. Let's talk about if they can. Before we get started, I wanna say that whether or not you can use our 30-ton hydraulic pump on your 30-ton hydraulic cylinder, you're gonna to have to make sure that our pump will put off enough pressure to operate your cylinder. You're going to need to watch Hydraulics 101 to see how to do that. First things first, you need to determine if your cylinder is single or double acting. Looking at our 30-ton cylinder here, you can see there's only one port on the end, so this is a single acting cylinder. I just want to briefly touch on volumetric flow rate. This is important because the amount of fluid coming out of your pump will determine how fast your cylinder moves, okay? So think about this kind of like a water hose. How much water comes out of a water hose versus how much water comes out of a fire hose. If you run off and you actually need a pump that's about this size to run your machine, but instead you buy a pump about this size to run your machine, don't be surprised when that cylinder moves slow as Christmas. So basically it comes down to these two things. Does our pump actually make enough pressure to operate your machine? That's covered in the other video, Hydraulics 101. And in this video, we're gonna talk about and kind of go into depth on does the pump actually have enough fluid to fully operate and fully extend your hydraulic cylinder? To give you kind of a visual representation of this, suppose for a minute I was to take this 30T hydraulic pump Great big pump, you can see there, lots of fluid volume, and I were to try and use that to operate this little 12-ton hydraulic cylinder, it's very, very easy for this pump to supply enough fluid to fill up that hydraulic cylinder, right? Oh crap, I'm too old for this. Now let's suppose that we use our 12-ton pump right here, much, much smaller pump, to fill up our 30-ton hydraulic cylinder. This cylinder is far larger than this pump. The chances of this pump possessing enough fluid to actually fill and operate that cylinder are slim to none. All right, so let's compute whether or not our 30-ton pump would operate your 30-ton cylinder, okay? Let's suppose for a minute that the internal bore diameter of your cylinder is four inches. The first thing that I need you to understand is there's absolutely nothing that you can measure on this cylinder in this state right here that will allow you to determine the internal bore diameter. You either A, have to break this cylinder down or B, find out the bore diameter from the cylinder manufacturer, but we're just going to assume that your cylinder is four inches in internal bore diameter. All right, so let's go ahead and write that on the board. Diameter equals 
four inches. Of course, half, half of diameter is the radius, which is two inches. Now let's talk about the stroke length of the cylinder. To get that, that's just the, the collapsed dimension, the length of the cylinder, and then go ahead and extend it all the way out. Whatever the differential is, that's your stroke. We're gonna call that with S for stroke. And we'll just, uh, we'll say in this situation, it's five inches. Now let's go ahead and compute the volume of the inside of this fictitious hydraulic cylinder here, the volume of the fluid inside this thing. So you're gonna need the formula for a circle, which is pi r squared, and then all you do is multiply that by the length of the cylinder. In this case, that's the stroke. So we'll do here uh, volume equals pi, okay? That's 3.1415. All right, that's going to be multiplied by the radius, not diameter, but radius. Radius is half of diameter, so that's two inches times two inches again. And then finally, we're gonna multiply by our stroke, which is five inches. So basically, if you plug into a calculator, 3.1415 times two times two times five, you get 62.83, and that's going to be cubic inches. If you're on our website and you look down in the specs tab, the specs will tell you that our pump holds 47.3 fluid ounces of hydraulic fluid. That is the absolute worst three I have ever made in my life for this video. I'm gonna leave that in there. So now the question becomes, is 47.3 fluid ounces enough to fill up our 63 cubic inch cylinders? Guys, this is crazy easy. You just go to Google and type in 47.3 ounces to cubic inches, and Google will very quickly tell you that 47.3 fluid ounces is basically about 85 cubic inches. Obviously, this is greater than this that pump possesses enough fluid to be able to operate that cylinder. I can already see it. I know some folks are gonna say, wait a second, Ian, in the comments, what about the hydraulic line? You didn't factor in the volume of the fluid in the hydraulic line. And the truth is, it doesn't actually matter whether that line is one foot long or 100 feet long, because when you connect that pump to that cylinder and you start pumping fluid through that line to that cylinder, as your fluid gets low, you start adding fluid in there. And then when it finally starts moving the cylinder, you just go ahead and top the reservoir and the pump back up and at that point you filled up the hydraulic line and you know you have enough fluid in the reservoir to operate the cylinder and you're good to go. I would hope that this goes without saying but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway in the event that that number right there was smaller than that number basically that means that as you start pumping fluid into that cylinder with that smaller pump at some point before you get to the end of its travel uh, the pump is going to start drawing air into the uh, the pump and you're done. Something I want to end with, it's very common that folks also come to us to buy hydraulic gauges for their shop press. And the thing that you need to understand about this is that the graduations, the dials on our gauges here are calibrated to a specific size cylinder. You can see here that this one right here says ram diameter and they mean internal bore diameter is 220 millimeters, whereas this one right here says 45. So if you run off and you put our gauge onto your cylinder, it is not going to give you an accurate tonnage reading unless you have the proper size cylinder that matches what it says there in the gauge. Again, go back and check out that Hydraulics 101 video. It explains the whole pressure equals force over area. It will hopefully make some sense of why you cannot take one of our gauges and put it onto your cylinder unless it's the right size cylinder. While we're briefly on the topic of hydraulic gauges, something that happens quite a lot is folks will reach out to us and they'll say, hey, uh, the fluid level in my hydraulic gauge right there is low, and they think that the gauge is actually leaking fluid when it's not. Uh, a lot of folks don't understand that that fluid in there, all it does is keep the needle moving slowly so that if you release all of the pressure real fast at once, the little needle does not just go shoot backwards and kind of uncalibrate itself. It's not supposed to be full of fluid. That's all the fluid does. One thing that I want to end with for you guys is if you run off and you buy a pump from us or anyone for that matter and you put it onto another machine that that pump was not specifically made for, you need to also consider the release pressure. Every hydraulic pump that we sell and basically every pump I've ever seen has an adjustable release pressure. That's the amount of pressure where it will not go above it. Suppose for a minute that you run off and you put our pump onto your press and you start going to 
town. You got yourself a 30 ton pump, a 30 ton press, but our pump maybe makes more pressure than the original pump that came on your press. Well, obviously when that thing gets to 30 tons, you want it to stop making pressure. You don't want it to just run away into oblivion until it gets to 35, 40 tons and self-destructs the machine, right? So just as an example, here's that 30 ton pump right there. You can see a little spot right there where you can adjust the release pressure. Typically you screw that little set screw in there inward. It makes more pressure. You turn it out, it makes less. If I was going to put this on a non redline press, I would definitely adjust the pressure or at least at minimum pay attention to the gauge, which hopefully you got the right gauge and just make sure that you don't run off and make more, more force than you, you know, than the machine can handle. And so it doesn't, you know, run off and start bending itself because the pump is supplying too much pressure. Alright guys, that's the end of this video. As a favor to me, if you would, click the subscribe button. Follow along as well as click the thumbs up. That basically just lets the YouTube algorithm know that this was actually good content. It was a helpful video and as a result, when it gets a bunch of those thumbs up, they will then display this video to other folks. If you got questions or want to correct me on anything that I said here today, tell me down below in the comments. I'm also going to put links down in the description to all of the cylinders and pumps that we carry on our website. I hope you guys found this helpful. I appreciate your time to watch. You guys have a great one. Take care.